Streamlabs has worked together with Loop Deck to create the perfect Loop Deck integration to control Streamlabs desktop with your Loop Deck Live or Live S. Also, Loop Deck allowed me to give away a brand new Loop Deck Live, so I will put the information about that in the pinned comment under this video. Now, anything we need to get started is on this blog post here. There's links to buy both devices, a short overview of the features, and then here we can get Streamlabs desktop, which I'm going to download already. And if we keep scrolling, we can download the Loop Deck software. I'm gonna download it for Windows. Now, I will add a link to this blog post in the description. It gives a clear overview of what everything is. But the real reason of this collaboration is that Logitech owns Streamlabs. And then now recently, Logitech has acquired Loop Deck, which allowed them to create the perfect plugin to control Streamlabs desktop with the Loop Deck Live. So the Loop Deck Live or Live S are macro devices that are aimed at live streamers and creatives. The Loop Deck Live came first and was later followed by the Live S, which is the more affordable version with less knobs and a slightly less premium build quality. However, the Live S, which is the more affordable option, is capable of the same functions and controls. Now, all the buttons in the middle of these devices are touchscreens and they are fully customizable in terms of looks, function and behavior. These devices are extremely capable and they integrate with most software you use. Okay, now I just launched the software. This is what it looks like by default. And before I show you how this works, I need to show you one thing, which is this right here, the Loop Deck AI Assistant. Now, this is something very cool because you can simply apply AI commands to text in one single click. So for example, a very useful one is translate and assist with language and correct grammar of selected text. You just drag and drop it right here. Let's say you're writing an email, but you're very bad at grammar. So you say, dear teacher, my dog ate my homework. Okay, this is definitely not gonna work. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so let's see if we can correct this grammar. So I'm gonna select the text. I'm just gonna press this command on the loop deck. And then it just opens Notepad and it gives you text to copy. Hey, hello, dear teacher, I didn't complete my homework. Can I please not submit it tomorrow? Thank you, Chris. <laughs> This is absolutely crazy. There are a lot of commands like this for programming, for daily life, also presets. Now, a lot of people are very intimidated by the whole layout of this Loop Deck program and the way everything works with the knobs on the side, the buttons at the bottom, and then the touchscreen in the middle that has different touchscreen pages. And it can be kind of confusing at the start, but I'll give you a quick and very clear overview so you know exactly how this works. So right now, as you can see, we are on this page right here. There's one other button that's lit up in green and if we click on it we go to another page right here this is where i added the shortcut and the first button is always the default page and then here for example i can open my file explorer so i just click on it and as you can see it just opened and so there are three drop downs on the top the first one is to select your device we have the loop deck live here there's also the loop deck live s which is this one right here so i will put it right here so you can see the clear difference so the loop deck live has six knobs on the side to click and to rotate the Loop Deck Live S has two of them. They can do the same thing, but there's just less options. Then instead of all these buttons right here, the Loop Deck Live S has one, but it does have more touch cream buttons as you can see. So essentially it will be able to do the exact same thing as the Loop Deck Live. You'll just maybe have to create an extra page to add extra controls. Now the profile here, for example, can be a specific program. For example, Adobe After Effects, and that changes literally everything. It gives you a new layout for your whole Loop Deck. So you can have a profile for a specific specific program, or you can also create a new profile, an empty one. Let's call it streaming. Click on okay. And then now we have a completely empty layout. Pretty much nothing is binded. And so then the last thing you need to do for this profile is turning off dynamic mode. Because if this is turned on, then whenever you go to a specific program, if the loop deck has a layout for that program, it will switch to the layout. So because of that, I'm gonna turn this off. So you don't want the loop deck to be constantly switching to everything. You want all those stream controls to be by your side and you don't want them to change. All right, now that we have our streaming profile ready, we can basically start setting up everything. And I'm gonna show it to you in a simple way because this is where people get confused. It's the workspaces you have right here, and then the touch pages, the dial ones, then the shortcuts on the bottom, and everything can essentially link to each other. I'm gonna show you in a very structured way so you will understand how everything works. Where we are right now is in the workspace. We have one workspace, and there's a shortcut here on this button, home workspace one. We can also see it green here on the loop deck itself and this just brings us to workspace one now on the right you have options to set up everything i can't set up streamlabs desktop yet because i need to link it okay so we have one scene i'm gonna make a second one 
gonna call this the gaming scene. I'm gonna make another one, be right back scene. And the error message is gone. So right now the loop deck program is linked to Streamlabs desktop. On the right, you can choose your Windows settings, for example, or in this case, Streamlabs desktop. And I'm gonna open this folder. So there are two types of icons here. There's the touch icons and then the rotate icons. Now it touches, for example, recording toggle to stop or start recording. And you can just drag it to the loop deck itself. You can drop it. And then as you can see, it now appeared right here. If I click this, you will see that the recording started and it also changes. So that's what I meant with dynamic buttons. You can now see that we're recording and I can stop the recording like this. Now the other ones are rotate actions. And this is for example, to change the desktop volume. And so the rotating ones, those you can drag to these knobs. And so each knob has a rotating function and then a press function. Now some options that you drag to them will have two of them by default. So as you can see, it appears here on the loop deck and I can now rotate this to change the volume. And as you can see, it also changes in Streamlabs OBS, but there's no press action. So besides the desktop audio rotate, we also have a press here to mute. So I can also drag this to this knob to the press function. And then now, as you can see on the loop deck, we can change the volume and we can also mute it. Now, if we go to the OS here, which is Windows, you will see that some actions, for example, under media and then volume level here, if I drag this to another knob, you will see that it automatically adds volume level and then toggle mute. So this is for my overall windows volume and I can also mute it. So that's the basic touch actions in the middle and then the rotating knobs on the side. Now the next level in understanding how all this works is that you have different touch pages on the bottom here and then different knob pages on the side. We have this page right here. I can click on plus and then as you can see, I go to a second page. Just as a test, I will go to Streamlabs desktop. I will go to scenes on the top and these are the three scenes that we have active i can make a shortcut to go to the gaming scene and then another shortcut to go to the be right back scene as you can see on the loop deck this is really useful you see in which scene you are currently so i can go to the gaming scene and then this one will be active and as you can see in streamlabs desktop it automatically changes right there so in the software we now have touch page one and then touch page two and the way you change these right here on the loop deck is just by dragging so you can just drag to the right drag to the left and the same thing can be done for the knobs on the side you can just make an extra page. And then for example, there we can add our Spotify actions. So Spotify volume, main volume, let's drag it over here. And we also see a press action toggle mute. This is to mute Spotify. And so the way we change between those dial pages is also just by scrolling or dragging. And so that doesn't change the touch pages. We have this right here and then we can scroll for the dials. All right, a quick intersection because I forgot two really important things. So first of all, as you can see in the software and also on the loop deck itself, I created a whole interface. I did this at the end of the video to create B-roll and I felt bad that I didn't talk about it in the video itself. But this is an example interface of what you would make for streaming. So these here are shortcuts for scene switching in Streamlabs desktop. Then these are Twitch shortcuts. Then these are custom icons from an icon pack. It's free. I'm going to show you how to do this because it will change boring buttons and it will make them look really cool and much more fun to use. And then on the side, I assigned dial actions, which control different sources in Streamlabs desktop, which is really cool. So these here are shortcuts for scene switching in Streamlabs desktop and they are native. They look like this when you apply them with loop deck. Now getting the icons is really simple. On the top right, there's a marketplace. And one of the things you can find in the marketplace are icon packs right here, 71 of them. And one of them was from Owned, which is a really dedicated sponsor of me. It's this one right here. By the way, Owned is also partly sponsoring this video together with loop deck. But these icons are completely free. You can just install them like this. And then let's change this this button. So in the software, we go to page two. That's where it is. You just click on the button and then on the bottom right, you will see it appearing and you can just click on this edit icon. Then on the left, we can choose icon library. So we need the animated icons. They are also free. And then one of the icons is this here right here for next. You just click on OK and then we click on save. And as you can see, it just changed. And now on the loop deck, we have a boring button and a really cool one. This is actually so much better. Now where it gets a bit tricky is with buttons that can change in status. For example, example here for the scene switches. So let's go to that page on the loop deck. If I go to the live scene, then this will be selected and then the previous button changes in appearance. Now you can also click on this button. Then on the bottom right, you will see two stances. So we have the selected one and then the deselected one and you can edit both of them separately. So let's say this is scene two deselected. Let's go to the selected stance. Also change this, but now to scene two selected. And then now on the loop deck, this is scene two. I can go to this one right here and then this button will fade out. So it gets more bright if you select it, if you select another one, then it will turn a bit darker. 
Okay, now one final thing I forgot to go over is what to do with the buttons on the bottom. Well, what I did in my previous explanation is go over these workspaces here and how to use it. But for streaming, this is way too overpowered because these workspaces right here, they change everything, the whole layout of the loop deck. You can apply new pages, new dials, it's way too much. And so what is recommended for streaming is assigning these different touch pages to the buttons on the bottom. So for example, button one, I will say assign touch page, touch page one, then for button two, touch page two, and for button three, touch page three. And then instead of sliding on the loop deck and maybe accidentally clicking a button, you can now use the buttons on the bottom to go to page two, page three, page one. And then it's up to you. You can use these buttons to cycle through pages, but going from page one to page six will be kind of a hassle and for streaming you want to be quick. So you can choose which controls you want to put on which page. Now one final thing, I promise you can also change the color of these buttons. So you could change it to red if you want. And then now the button color has changed. So like this you can customize the whole loop deck. The LEDs look really good on the loop deck live S. If we go to the markup place, we can probably find an overlay pack that's in the same style from the icon pack we just got because some owned overlay packs are linked here in the market and we're being brought to all of the packs right here. So this this is the owned.tv website and there's a bunch of graphics for streamers here. As you can see also subscriber emotes, stream alerts. And so let's go to stream overlay packages. Let's go for a YouTube overlay and I'm gonna sort by bestseller. And the modern one I saw before is on the bestseller list. This is a complete overlay pack. It's completely animated as well. You can buy this once and use it as long as you want. I'm gonna add it to the cart. By the way, if the discount goes away, there is a code that I have with them. It's TVN. It will probably always give you a discount so you can definitely use that code. Okay so I just completed the purchase and we can immediately download it. You can get it in multiple languages. I'm gonna get it in English. It should be downloading right now. I'm gonna go to Streamlabs. I'm gonna go to the settings and then under scene collections we can just import an overlay file. So let's go to downloads modern series quick start import. There we go. <laughs> I'm really curious what it's gonna look like. Okay so the live scene has a few options for the webcam board. You can just choose which one you want and then delete delete the rest. They are very clean in folders. And then for example, the just chatting scene. There we go. The transition is added by default. And you could immediately add your webcam here. You could change the text and everything on the bottom. If you go to the loop deck app now, under scenes, they are automatically populated. So in Streamlabs here, you see the scene collections and we were in this one before. So then we had the two scenes and then a loop deck. It will also show those two ones. And so you could make a new page if you want. We could add the just chatting scene that had the nice overlay and then maybe the live scene for when you're gaming. And so then if you look at Streamlabs desktop together with the loop deck, we can now go to the just chatting scene. It will automatically transition. It will select that it's active and we have it in Streamlabs OBS. If you want to get an overlay of yourself, I will add a link in the description. Code TVN will always give you a discount, so don't forget to use that. Under the Streamlabs desktop integration, the scenes were auto-populating, but the same thing happens for your sources, for the audio, and you need to understand how this populates. So there will be different audio controls that appear here on the right. If you go to the settings in Streamlabs OBS and then to audio, this is where you add your general audio. So as you can see, that's desktop default, microphone default, and those are the two that show up right here in the mixer at the top. And those are also the two that show up in the loop deck app under the general audio. So you have the touch to mute and then the knob to change the volume. And you have that for the desktop and the mic. However, those extra ones that auto populate right here that are coming from sources that have audio, those you will find under the specific scenes here. By the way, the rotating actions that you drag to one of the knobs here on the loop deck, you can also drag those rotating actions to the touch buttons. And so what will happen then is it appears right here. It's different than the mute one because it's a complete control that we have here on the left. So what happens when you click that, you go to a temporary interface where you can change the volume and then you can just leave that interface and you go back to normal. And this might not be that useful right here because you have six knobs on the side. What more could you need? You even have different pages, but on the loop deck life as here, you only have two of these knobs. So then maybe having an interface like this might be useful on the loop deck life as because well these two knobs aren't gonna be enough and you also can't really slide to go to a different page you would probably be able to add shortcuts that go to a different page where you have different controls here although i'm not even entirely sure so i'm gonna test it i'm gonna plug in the loop deck life s and this is the basic layout that you get all right as you can see these are the rotating knobs and we can add a different page and now we will be able to add a button here that says assign dial page so we have dial page one and then we just made a new one dial 
dial page two, that will be this one here, dial page two, and then the first is streaming. And so then on the loopback live S, you will be able to click it. And as you can see, it shows the controls of these dials. When you use one of the dials, this button changes and it shows what you're doing. So it will show the mute and the volume change, but when you don't touch it for a while, it will go back. So then this one will be the same. Okay, that's device backlight. So we can turn off the device and then add more brightness, but that one doesn't have anything added yet. However, I actually really like how they implemented this. I didn't know it yet. And to be fair, I like the overall look of this a bit more. There are more touch buttons in the middle. It's a bit more simple. Unless you have some really complicated workflow, you're not gonna need all of these shortcut buttons right here. And then all of this, you could absolutely use the Loop Deck Life S, have different bindings for everything, different dial pages with different options. Then you could add shortcuts right here. As you can see, these are Twitch shortcuts. Then this is probably the main page. And you get the exact same software and controls. Now I could keep going on about ways to integrate the Loop Deck Life or Live S in your workflow. There are so many options. I think that after filming this video, my editor is gonna wanna steal one of these. I will add links to the Loop Deck Life, the Loop Deck Life S, Streamlabs Desktop and Owned Packages in the description. If you combine all of those, you have the ultimate set to start and keep streaming. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that I will see you in the next one. Have a nice day.